We continue Gary's life-altering teaching, The Power of Rest, today on Fixing the Money Thing. God's Word promises us the ability, through the double portion, to live a stress-free life, stay on assignment, and serve our purpose. From Faith Life Church in New Albany, Ohio, Gary Cassie's message, The Power of Rest. I got this letter from a partner from Keith. He's probably watching right now, Keith. Great story. Keith's been a partner for a number of years here. I'll read it. Once again, I find myself crying as I attempt to write this message to you. Six years ago, when Keith and I first saw you on Sid Roth and ordered those first CDs, we could not possibly have imagined the journey we were about to take. It has been a wild ride. We knew that your message was a true revelation to you from God and that we needed to immerse ourselves in your teaching to wash away all the religion and lies about God we've been taught. Today, we joined your service online and cried through most of it as we rejoiced in what God has done through and for us. A short version of our story is that two weeks after we moved into our new home, Keith lost his job. This would have destroyed him and caused him much fear if he had not been well-versed in your teachings. For that, we greatly thank you. It was a blessing in disguise. He started a trucking company with with part of his retirement fund. A few months after he started, a friend called him and asked him to come and talk about doing some hauling for another company that he had worked for. Keith didn't go for several months because he thought that he was too busy. However, this friend was persistent, and Keith finally went to meet with him. And during the meeting, this friend slid a check across the desk showing Keith how much his company was paying a different trucking company for a single week of work. It was $50,000. This blew Keith's mind, but it gave him something to believe in. As you have taught us, if you can see it, you can have it. He came home with a new vision for his business. So we started the new, the new, what do you call it, the regrouping or the, the relaunch of our business, if you will. And the first week we made $8,718, exclamation mark. That's pretty good money, right? We thought we'd really made it big, but God was not done. Keith had struggled with tithing all of his life. It wasn't that he was a, uh, not a giving kind of person. He simply did not see how the math would work if he tithed. I told him that it was a supernatural event, and I prayed that God would blow his mind when he started to tithe consistently. Well, he really did. Last week, less than a year later, uh, we sent this company an invoice for our trucking, our trucking company, for $31,775.84 for one week of work. We stand and release our faith with you every week. We give all the glory to God. We thank him every day for you and your ministry. We know that we would still be on that hamster wheel of work and toil if it were not for you and your ministry. I just had to tell you this good news. By the way, we expect another record-breaking week this week. Keith, good job. Think bigger, Keith. Keep going. And I I would say this to Keith. Keith, now start thinking national, you know. You got the prototype, now duplicate it. All right. Here's another email I received this week. Excuse my English, she says. Last year on the same date, I was buying Christmas presents with credit cards, taking the cards to the limit because I didn't have any money to buy presents for my daughter who still believed in Santa Claus. I lived in constant anxiety and sadness, and I wrote to Pastor Gary on this website that this sewing thing just doesn't work. Nothing's happened. And he very patiently answered me and said, wait, the harvest doesn't always come the very next day. Today, I'm buying presents for my, all my family with cash. I'm buying presents that cost three and four hundred dollars a piece. I'm honoring people who helped me, helped me in those difficult times. Last year, I lived in a room in a basement that some friends allowed me to stay there for a few months. I didn't even have enough money to buy food or gasoline. I now live in a beautiful and fancy apartment, and my refrigerator is full of food. 
December 3rd was my daughter's birthday. We took her to Hershey Park in Pennsylvania. We invited her best friend. We stayed at the Hershey Hotel. We paid cash for everything, and she got gifts that cost hundreds of dollars. Um, last year, I was humiliated when someone gave me $30 to celebrate my daughter's birthday. I cannot even write this post without weeping. I am so grateful to Pastor Gary and his wife. This year has been the best year of my life. The things God has done in my life are wonderful. I could write a book with all my stories. Thank you, Pastor Gary, for teaching me that I can live heaven on earth. I like that. All right. And so can you. So can you. But as I'm even saying these words, a lot of you, those thoughts are canceling what I'm saying. Uh, not for me. I don't know. I'm just, I don't know about that. I don't know. I've tried so hard. I don't know. Yeah, you've tried hard. They fished all night and caught nothing. We're not saying you didn't try hard. We're just saying there's another law. There's another system. You need to learn how it operates, right? Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. That's in the New Testament. There remains a Sabbath rest for you. Now, what could they not do on the Sabbath? They couldn't sweat toil. They couldn't, they couldn't work. So if you can't work on the Sabbath, how do you exist on the Sabbath if you can't work? We've got to find that out. The Bible says there is a Sabbath rest for you. Verse 10, for anyone who enters God's rest, now this is important, anyone who enters God's rest also rests from his own work just as God did from his. Now we go back to Genesis to find out what they're saying. Let me read it again. For anyone who enters God's rest. Now, in, in, uh, six days he made the, the earth, right? The seventh day it says he rested. He was not tired. The Bible says that he was, it was complete and he was finished. That's why he rested. Are you getting this? So when the Bible says anyone who enters into God's rest also rest from his own work. Why? Because he already has everything that's complete. Just as God rested from his. Why did God rest? Help me out. Why did God rest? He was finished. Not tired. He was finished and everything was there for man to live on the earth realm. Man was created at the end of the sixth day to live in the seventh day. Everything was there. Everything was there. Everything was there. There was no stress. When we enter into God's rest, everything's complete, we rest. Does that make sense? I mean, if, if your, your bills are paid and you got groceries, you're not stressed, right? That's basically what it's saying, is that when everything's complete and in the kingdom, everything is complete, everything has been made new and you have access to the kingdom, you'll find rest if you enter into God's rest Everything's complete. Very good. Stand to your feet with me today. And let's just have a moment to talk about this in a more personal way. Okay? I told you our story. Nine years of hell on earth. Told you that. I don't know where you're at today. I don't have to know where you're at today. But you need to know where you're at today. Things have to change. The stories I'm telling you are, we got so many of them. So many of them. In my own life, during that, I could probably write books and books and books of stories, just like, I mean, just amazing stories of the kingdom. They should be your stories as well. This church has to move forward. We got work to do. This culture needs to be astonished at something besides what they see on TV. Amen. Right? People are watching you. They need to see God's kingdom operate in your life. They need to be astonished. Like, really? You did? What? How'd that happen? I know you. You're not that good. You know, you, they got to be astonished. Well, you can become part of God's kingdom. All these benefits are in the kingdom of God. And whatever religion's told you, forget all that. God sent Jesus for you. He loves you. He's not mad at you. He wants you to have the benefits of his kingdom. Luke chapter 12, it says, don't be afraid. It's always been the Father's will to give you the kingdom. And let's all pray together. Again, if you raised your hand, say these words out loud. Mean them from your heart. We're going to believe the Holy Spirit's going to touch you. But even greater than being born again and knowing God, we're going to find a new way of living for you. God's going to show you a new way of life. 
It's called the kingdom of God. Let's pray. Say, Father, you said in the Bible that if I simply call on the name of Jesus, that you would receive me and make me brand new on the inside. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Today I say yes. Let it be recorded in heaven that I called on the name of Jesus. I am now part of your kingdom, part of your very household. In Jesus' name, amen.